what can you tell us about Momentum, about the new album? It marks, it's the 11th album I made my, my homework. It's the 11th album you've recorded uh, with Neil. So that's the longest musical collaboration of, uh, of your career with any artist. Uh, so that's a record for you. And I wonder, uh, how do you feel at this moment about that catalog that you've generated? And uh, w w how do you see the, the relationship evolving into the future? And, and, and if you could say something about Momentum. That's a lot of questions <laughs> and a lot of thoughts. I could probably spend an hour giving you my thoughts on all of that stuff. But um, I'll, I'll say what I've always said about Neil is that um, not only is he um, one of my dearest friends, and at this point uh, one of my most frequent collaborators, but above all, uh, he's one of my favorite songwriting songwriters or artists of all time. I mean... It, I absolutely love everything he's done, and I'm so proud to be a part of, um, you know, so much of it. But uh, even if I wasn't playing on all these 11 albums that we've made together, I would be a huge fan of them, just because I, I really, truly love him as an artist so much. Um, but Momentum is uh, the seventh uh, Neil Moore solo album that I've, I've played on, and... Um, I guess I say this every time, but I, I really think it might be my favorite. Um, I think each and every time we make an album together, we we uh, we still raise the bar and and still completely inspire each other. And um, I really love the final outcome of Momentum. It's it's um, if I had to compare it to anything in Neil's past, I would compare it more to maybe like Spock's Beard Five because it's um, it's six individual songs. It's not a concept album, so it's individual uh, songs that stand on their own. And, um, you know, there's there's five uh, more concise pieces of music and then one giant epic at the end. Uh, but like, an, like anything I've done with Neil, I'm incredibly proud of it. Um, and it's, uh, you know, he as, as always, he... He uh, stretched me to some of my, uh, you know, to some of my best capabilities. You know, there's some really, truly progressive moments on this album that uh, really challenged me to rise to the occasion. And on the other side of the spectrum, some truly beautiful, dynamic moments, you know. Uh, like anything I've ever done with Neil, it's, 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 it's a musical journey. The, the epic that you mentioned at the end of Momentum, the, the big song that, rem if I understand correctly, you're comparing with The Great Nothing from uh, Spock's Weirds 5. Uh, do you, last time you said that Seats of Gold was one of your, your five favorite uh, Neil Moore right. epics. Is this uh, going to make it to that top five, do you think? Uh, I think so. I mean, you know, God, Neil has so many great epics. It's hard for me to even... Pick him. You know, he had a bunch with Spock's beard before we started working together, and then through the years uh, between Transatlantic and, and his solo albums, we've we've made so many together, um, and it, each one is just you know just as great as the last. Um, it's hard to say, but this one is the longest one. Um, this uh, the, the epic on the on the Momentum album is, is 33 minutes, so it's actually uh, I believe the longest single. Uh, track that we've made together, and we've made some long ones. You know, all of the above, I think, was 30 minutes, and "Stranger in Your Soul" and "Duel with the Devil" were both very, very long. Um, Seeds of Gold, and uh, you know, we, we've had our share of epics in the past, but I think this might be the biggest of them all. <laughs> uh, last time, the other thing that Neil said to the Mexican audience was that you designed the uh, set list for the Salon Jose Cuervo show. Uh, mm -hmm. Is this going to happen again this year? Are you going to master the set list? Because I just wanted to mention that Mexican fans are really expecting uh, some transatlantic in the mix. Is that is that a possibility for you, or you you, you don't want to talk about that? Right, it's two four months away. Uh, well, uh, there's two parts to that question. The first is, will I be involved with the set list? Uh, yeah, Neil has actually once again allowed me to um, to write the set list, and I've submitted to him what I think would be a great set, and. Um, you know, with seven solo albums to choose from, there's so much incredible material to work with. And like I used to do with Dream Theater, 
um, I, you know, I've written a set that is completely different from last time, and uh, you know, also a set that really covers the whole catalog. Um, whether or not we go with the set that I submitted, uh, Neil hasn't signed off on it yet, yet, but I have uh, submitted it, and we'll see if you know if it if it ends up sticking. <laughs> uh, as far as transatlantic material, uh, to be honest. I, I I don't think we should be including transatlantic material or Spock's beard material, to be honest. I, I know there's many fans that would like to hear that stuff, but Neil and I have seven albums of his solo material to, to pick and choose from. There's so much music uh, to work with, and, and also Transatlantic is, is still an active band. Um, if Transatlantic wasn't uh, potentially going to, you know, be making more records and touring more than, than maybe it would make sense to play it because it's a part of it, both of our past. But, um, you know, I believe Transatlantic still has some, some chapters ahead of us, so I would rather save the Transatlantic material to play with Royna and Pete. 